In the next few videos, we're going to talk about latches and flip-flops and begin building sequential logic. But before we do any of that, I want to kind of take a step back or a step up and try to look at why any of this matters. Like, what is the point of latches and flip-flops and why would we even want to use them? And to do that, I want to start by thinking about what would we do? How would we build a circuit that can count? Okay, so up to this point, we've built circuits that just have static inputs and then produce, you know, they do some kind of Boolean algebra and hopefully produce some kind of interesting result, but it's a static result. It's a combinational circuit where the outputs are a fixed function of the inputs. And this is going to be building this circuit that can count is a huge shift because now the circuit can keep track of its current count and then somehow increment that count and count up. It, it produces different values over time. Okay, so how, so how would we do that? Well, let's suppose we have some kind of device that can hold values. Okay, so I'm gonna call this thing a register. Okay, now this is not, uh, if you've already done some programming, so like low level assembly or something, you've You've talked about registers in a computer. This is similar, but not exactly the same concept. So a, a CPU register is a register in this sense, but this is sort of the more general sense of a circuit that can hold some values and, and keep those values. So, so we've got some register. It can hold, uh, let, let's assume it holds several bits. Um, this may, maybe it's like a, a stack of individual items so I'm just going to kind of draw this the way we've drawn stacks of multiplexers or other things. So it, in each, each of these can hold an individual bit, and then I've got some stack of them so that we can hold a whole group of bits. And then I can build an ALU. So let's go ahead and just stick an ALU over here. And, and it will just add. And we want to just add one. So I'm going to take whatever the current count is here and I'm going to pass that back into the ALU. So if, if the register is holding the count, then whatever the current count is is coming out of the right side and back into the ALU. Then we just take the value one. Uh, this is like numeric one as opposed to a, just a bit one. And add that to whatever the current count is, and that's going to be the next count that we store into this register. Okay, so if I can do this, if I can build a thing that, that stores some values, we already know how to build an ALU, and so we can, we can take the stored value, we can then add one to it, and get a new value that's one higher, and then store that back into the register, and we'll have a circuit that can count. But there's a few problems we have to think about on, on our way to making this work. Um, first, you might say, well, like, why not just connect, you know, just connect this wire through, right? We, um, we can produce the output of the ALU, just run it back in here. Um, for one thing, this is not a combinational circuit. We've broken the basic rule that there can't be feedback in a combinational circuit. And there's sort of a, a deeper problem. Uh, this wire is not just a single wire, it's a collection of bits. So there's there are multiple wires here coming out. And each of them is gonna have a different propagation delay. The wire itself might have a different propagation delay, but then definitely going into the ALU, different bits of the ALU are gonna have different propagation delays. And so if we just let this free run, like whatever, whenever the output here is produced and then it just gets fed back in, um, if we're just connecting them straight through, then there's total chaos because these bits come out at different times and then we're just feeding them right back in. And so quickly this just generates and degenerates into total chaos. There's nothing um, that's synchronizing the bits. So, so requirement one is that the register be able to store information. Requirement two is that it have some way to synchronize bits, be able to synchronize when it's capturing 
values. So you might imagine that we're holding a particular value here. We've just like set this up on the output and then those values propagate around, they get added, we produce new values and then those get held over here. But they don't affect the output value yet because if they did, then we just have this continuous race. Okay, so then we need some kind of signal here. So I'm just gonna call this the go signal. Okay, and in future videos, we'll talk about exactly what this go signal is. But on the instant that go signal is triggered, then I'm gonna copy the values from the input and make them visible on the output. And if I set this up right, I can, I can hold off on the go signal. I don't have to trigger it right away. I wait until this computation is done. And once all of the bits have settled, then I can trigger the go signal I copy the new values over, and then that becomes the new count. And now that we have this new count, again, the process can happen. The bits can all wait here until everything is ready. We trigger the go signal again, and then we copy it out, and we've, we've counted the next, the next value. Okay, so our two goals in building this up are, number one, store memory, store value, store bits. And then second, be able to synchronize, not just one bit, but synchronize multiple bits together so that I can, I can do things with whole buses and have all of those bits operate together. And so for the next few videos, we're gonna first start talking about SR latches, which are gonna handle the storing bits part. Then we'll talk about a D-latch, which is sort of a more effective way to store a bit more directly. And it's building on the SR latch. So we'll start with the SR latch and then we'll build some things onto that to build the D-latch. And then finally, we'll talk about a D flip-flop, which builds on the D-latch and handles the second part of synchronizing bits. And once we've got that, once you understand how a D flip-flop works, you'll actually be able to build this whole circuit and make circuits that count, and so many other things. Um, in this case, we've, we've just put in an ALU, but very quickly we'll start putting in all kinds of other different combinational logic here. And this basic idea of this register plus combinational logic is gonna turn out to be extremely powerful. Uh, it's gonna propel us through the rest of the course.